Like me, you may have seen other needle felters create scenes in teacups, and it gave me an idea. Why don't I try to needle felt a winter or Christmas scene in a clear plastic bauble? It was only after I started this project I realised this means I'll have to needle felt a tiny house, a tiny tree, and the smallest snowman in the history of needle felting. Can I achieve this challenge? Let's get started and find out, and along the way I'll give you some tips on shaping. The first thing I needed to do was felt some coarse carded wool into a base for the winter scene to sit on. So using a thick 36 gauge triangular needle I stabbed the wool into the bottom of the bauble so that it would take on the bauble shape. This was a daft idea as the needle scratched the inside of the bauble. Also I had to take it out of the bauble in the end and stab it around the underside anyway. So maybe felt this shape outside the bauble instead of ruining a perfectly good bauble like I did. <laughs> But luckily I had a spare bauble. Phew. You can get these baubles in the UK from the works. In the US you should be able to get these from your local craft store or maybe even the Dollar Tree. These ones I'm using are about 3 inches or 8 centimetres wide. Before I moved on I checked it's not too high as we need room for a house and a tree to fit on top of it. Next I coated the top of the base with bright white merino wool to make it look extra snowy. Before I started on my Christmas scene I had a look on the internet for winter scene inspiration and then sketched out roughly what I wanted to make. It won't win any prizes but at least I have a plan. First I thought I'd tackle a cottage so I took some beige wool and rolled it into a small cylinder. Then to felt it into a rectangle rectangular cube with flat sides. I stabbed it straight down and then rotated it 90 degrees and stabbed it again straight down, repeating this over and over. Here I was using the clover multi-needle holder with three 40 gauge triangular needles in it. Yet again I've picked a project where my fingers are at risk. As I said at the time it's finger pricking good. After a while it started to take shape into a small cube. After I'd got the basic shape I switched from the multi-needle tool to a single 42 gauge triangular needle so that I could focus on the edges and try to get them as sharp and angular as possible. I found that by holding the cube with another needle I made sure I didn't stab myself. Once I had the cube shape I set about felting a triangular shape for the roof, basically making a Toblerone shape. So here you can see I'm holding my spare needle at the angle I want the side of the roof to be and I'm making sure I stab at 90 degrees to that needle. This will make a flat surface at that angle and then I'm alternating between each side of the sloped roof so that one side isn't bigger than the other. Make sure you keep in your mind the shape you want it to be and don't forget to stab at 90 degrees to the ends too so that they're flat. Continue to stab at these angles while you attach it to the main body of the house and stab around the edges down into the house. Next I got a small amount of the same wool and rolled it to make a chimney, stabbing it all round into a very small cylinder. I left one end of the cylinder unfelted to make it easier to attach it to one side of the cottage. Then I hand carded some bright white merino wool, mushing it together, and coated the top of the roof to make it look like it was covered in snow. I thought it would make the cottage look cosy and lived in if we had some smoke coming out the top of the chimney, so I took a tiny amount of carded coal wool and stabbed it mostly at one end. Then once I got the right amount, I attached the more felted end to the top of the chimney by stabbing it down into the very top which was quite fiddly. Please don't forget to click the like button if you're enjoying this content. By doing this you'll help the needle felters find this video. To make the windows look like there's a light on inside, I decided to pick a warm light yellow colour for my multicoloured pack I got from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. I hand carded this wool to make it easier to apply by mixing it up together and rolled the wool into a ball and then stabbed it into a square shape on the front of the cottage. For the window frames I took a small amount of brown merino roving or tops wool and twisted it to form a very thin strand of wool. I laid this across the centre of the yellow and felted it down in a line and trimmed off the excess on each end. Then I did the same from the top to the bottom to form four panels in the window. Next I added a strip of white merino roving wool in the same way underneath the bottom of the window to act as snow on the windowsill. But I should have felted the windowsill first, which I correct when I felt the second window. Then I used some more of the brown merino roving to go around the other three sides of the window and under the snow. So when felting the second window, I used some more of the brown merino roving to go around all the sides of the window first, and then put a small windowsill underneath, and then added snow on top of that. This made it slightly easier. Realising that the left window now had less snow on the windowsill, I added a bit more. Needle felting is often trial and error. I'm constantly learning each time I make something. For the door I held a thicker strip of brown merino roving down across the front and felted along in a line across the top of the door and all the way down to the bottom of the door. 
then trimmed the excess wool off at the top and the bottom and needle felted the ends in to needle it up. I felted two more windows at the back but without window sills. Needle felting the details on the house was very fiddly. Next time I think I'll felt an igloo. At least there won't be any windows to felt. Now to check if it fits in the bauble okay. Whew, thank goodness for that. Next I wanted to felt a big fir tree like the image I'd found on my phone. So I hand carded some green merino wool again from my Amazon pack of assorted colours and I spread this out so there's less wool and it's thinner on the right hand side than the left so that when I roll it up it will form a cone shape. Stub it all around and don't forget to angle your needle slightly to help form the cone shape and stab the bottom of the tree flat. Then using a single 42 gauge triangular needle I went over the tree and created some indents and texture to the tree by stabbing at intervals to create undercuts. This was to try and to make it look like branches were sticking out. I did this a bit unevenly as I thought they'd look more realistic that way. To be honest, I was just experimenting at this stage. So I rolled up some blobs of white wool to attach to it to look like snow settled on the tree. As I got further down the tree, I decided to throw out the less is more mantra and started adding bigger pieces of rolled up white wool which made them stand out a bit more from the tree. Then as this was looking a bit better, I went back over some of the areas I'd already done. I'd be interested to hear what you think in the comments. Then it was time to attach the house to the base. So I stabbed around the bottom of the house down into the base and then used a strip of white wool around the base to attach it firmly. Every cottage needs a narrow winding path from the front door. So I used some grey merino roving in a thin strip and attached it to the base, winding it round to the right. Oops, I realised I'd gone in the wrong direction and decided to remove some of it and take the path in a different way. For more information on how to do this, you might want to watch my Fix Felting Mistakes video. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. Then I decided where I wanted the tree to go and attached it by stabbing through the bottom of the tree into the base all the way round the bottom. At this point I looked at the roof of the cottage and felt there just wasn't enough snow on there. So out comes the white wool. Looking again at this winter scene it was looking a bit barren. So I rolled up some dark green wool and made various sized round blobs of wool to act as bushes. Attaching them around the cottage to make the garden look nice. And a lighter green one at the back. Then of course each of these bushes needed a snowy top. So yet more white wool was used to give each bush a little white hat. Now for the tiniest snowman I've ever made. I took a small amount of bright merino roving and rolled it up and shaped it into a ball, being careful not to stab my fingers. Again using another needle to hold it helped. Then I did the same with slightly less wool for his head and attached the head onto the body. How am I going to needle felt any detail onto this tiny snowman I thought to myself. Why do I insist on torturing myself in this way? First I tackled a scarf for this little fella. I thought a nice blue scarf would look good. So I took this tiny piece of merino roving wool and holding it in a narrow strip stabbed it along just a bit to hold its shape. Then I wrapped it round the snowman's neck and across his front and stabbed it to attach, trimming it where I wanted it to end. Then I attached it all round the back of the neck and down the other side. Next came the part I'd been dreading, giving the snowman eyes. I took only a few strands of black and rolled two lots between my fingers to make two tiny dots of wool. Then carefully I attached each eye by stabbing the black wool repeatedly in the same place to try and keep the eye as small as possible, making them both the same size and shape by angling my needle inwards towards the centre. I then realised some of the black wool had gone right through and out the back of his head poor thing. So I trimmed it with scissors and did some very shallow stabbing to try and persuade it to go back in but it wasn't having it. So I got a little bit more white wool and covered the black dot and it was as though it never existed. Well not quite but it was a lot better. His nose was even trickier than his eyes. I got a tiny piece of orange wool and folded it up into a small blob. This was not easy to shape but I tried rotating it and stabbing it as best I could to try and make it small enough to be the right size. But in the end I had to cut a tiny bit off this to get the blob that was small enough to attach and shape into his nose. But still I'm not sure if he looks a bit like a duck. Oh well. The only thing missing was a little stone step that I added in the front door. I made sure I had the front of the seam not facing the join of the bauble and then used some regular super glue to glue it to one side making sure it was level. I popped the two halves of the bauble together and added some red jute to finish it. Oh and by the way I went over everything to get rid of some of the fuzziness and to make the finish smooth. 
If you're struggling with getting a smooth finish, there's actually several tips and techniques that you have to take note of if you really want to get the finished item looking smooth and great. And in this video, I'll not just show you all the various techniques, but I'll show you the techniques that really work and get you the best smooth results. Thanks for watching.